Ben told me that you uh, uh, you sold your work to a meth, a meth user once. <laughs> meth user <laughs> slash drug dealer. <laughs> he yeah. asked you to paint his portrait. <laughs> yes, he did. It was very Russian dictator. <laughs> Welcome to the first episode of On the Come Up with Felix Wong, a show where I profile the most inspiring young artists, filmmakers, musicians, and visionaries from across Canada. Here in the studio today is Megan O'Donnell, better known as The Play, a 19-year-old painter whose unique psychedelia-inspired artwork has earned her an impressive following. Megan, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. So what's the meaning behind your artist name, The Plague? I came up with The Plague about a year and a half ago, and it's basically the the title I gave my creativity. So when I'm in my studio and I get this flow of creativity throughout my body, my hand takes over. And so The Plague seemed accurate because it's uncontrollable. Sounds like you've said that many, many times. It's a very frequent question I get. (laughs) (laughs) So um, what about like some of the stories that you have that have inspired some of your artwork? Not just like general feelings, but I'm talking like an actual like event. Yeah, yeah. Are are those uh, inspiration? Absolutely. Um, One time, I went on an absolutely beautiful hike when I was in British Columbia, and I felt so small in comparison to the trees and the ginormous ocean that was behind me. And so, when I got back to my studio, when I got back to um, to Ontario. I had to draw on a smaller scale and I had to draw in more intense detail because I felt like the smaller things were just equally as important as the big things. What did you end up drawing? I ended up drawing um, a purple woman that was handing over a balloon that had a face on the top of it to a bird in a circle. And the woman, instead of having a face, she had a mandala as a head. What does the bird in the circle represent? I have no idea. I have absolutely no clue. It just seemed necessary. Do you draw a lot of things just because? I draw what I want to see. So if I have some kind of, if I see um, a weird picture or something, I'll look at what I would want to improve. And so I'll take that picture and I'll mold it to my own liking. And then I'll put it back out into the world and then more people will connect to it too. They'll be like, you know what? I really like what you did with that. I'm like, thank you. Can you give me an example of of that, of a picture that... Yes, absolutely. Um, Well, there was one photographer that did a lot of black and white um, pictures of dancers in very weird poses. Um, And when it had a spotlight on it, because it was just in black and white, the contrast was fantastic. So the highlights and the shadows. So I took that and basically switched the mediums that it was done in. So instead of doing a gradient kind of effect to it, I made it blocked and I turned it into cubism. You talk about drawing dancers or being inspired by paintings of dancers. Absolutely. Um, I know that you do a lot of life drawing. Yes. Why do you gravitate towards life drawing? Well, I love life drawing, but to narrow it down even further, I love the female form. I think that... What about it? I think that it has beautiful curves to it. I think it's gentle. It's nurturing. It has such an elegant, like, comforting aspect to it that no matter how you paint it, it's more intriguing. Because a female form can do, like, a lot more than a male form can. Really? Honestly. Well, when it comes to expressing yourself through those the photos that I was talking about women will be set in more gentle poses while men will be flexing and doing like more masculine type poses it would be fantastic if they were intertwined but like when when they're modeling for artists exactly are they told to they're probably fitting a role but I'm sure that's probably not exactly who they are as the model themselves but it's like it's expected so what you, think, you think that should change? Oh, I absolutely do. Yeah, I think that everybody should do everything. So it right. shouldn't be limited to genders whatsoever. But unfortunately, that's what I've seen. But the beautiful thing about the female form is that, like, throughout history even, it's just been admired. It's like, oh. Hey, I hear you. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously. <laughs> well, I'm not a painter, and I agree 110%. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Let's talk about your studio. Um, I know that you paint in in a little tiny shed. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Um, Do you find that to be more creatively stimulating than, say, like working in a home studio, a larger Yes, absolutely. Because what about it? Well, when I'm back there, it's like I'm secluded from the world. That space is no one's but mine. So I can do whatever I want to it. I can write on the walls. I can paint on the ceiling. Like I could be naked when I paint. Like it doesn't matter what I do back there, you know? And so in that kind of environment it's freeing from the rest of the world and when I put on my music and I get lost in my artwork it's like 
I don't know, the smaller the space, the better you concentrate, I find. So I know that you had you just had your first art show yes. at York University. Um, was that the very first time you showed off your entire collection of work? Well, it was um, a section of my collection. My entire collection would be too much for one building, <laughs> I would say, because I have quite, quite a lot stored up. But... Um, Yeah, that was one of the first times I had ever really done it professionally. Like, I've done little art booths to sell my artwork, but I've never had it displayed like that. Do you feel as though you've crossed a a threshold? Absolutely, because I was uncomfortable that evening, and that's how I know that I was growing. Because when I get anxious and I get uncomfortable, that means that I'm pushing myself and trying something new and Mm. putting myself out there into the world, which will make you grow in the long run. So those feelings of discomfort, they drive you forward? Yeah, I just like whenever I experience those sensations, all I want to do is get past them. So I just keep working until I can experience those same situations without the discomfort and anxiety. Well, how do you feel about your art being judged by people? Don't you feel don't you feel as though people will judge it uh, like black and white, like this is good or bad? Um, a, a lot of people. Yeah. I believe that the first time that you look at my artwork, you're going to make an automatic assumption. Either you like it or you don't. How do you feel about that? Well, it's a little nerve-wracking when you're doing it because it's impossible for it not to come into your mind. But the main thing is, though, you do it. Every artist that is good was making art for themselves, not for other people. You make your art for your own expression and the audience will react to it however they will. You can't let it bother you too much. But it's something I'm working on. Do you feel vulnerable? (laughs) I feel so naked. You expose yourself (laughs) in that way? Well, yeah, absolutely. Because when I do that, I like naked's the perfect word because... I'm putting myself on display. People are either going to come up to me and tell me that, you know, what I'm doing is a waste of my time and they don't like what I've done and it could really hurt my feelings, but... Has that happened before? Yeah, actually, there is this... Particularly, there's this one guy, this one little old Russian man who I actually kind of adore for doing it. He just would find me at every Kensington show and just give me constructive criticism and then walk away after he stated it. But and it was constructive criticism. Exactly. It wasn't necessarily attacking me. But what did he say to you? He was talking about one of my paintings that I have, Royals, um, because 95% of the canvas is just white. And so he didn't like the empty space. He said that it was pointless and that something should be there and that if he were to do it, he would have added in flowers or an arc or something like that. What did you say back to him? Well, I said that he should do a painting himself then. <laughs> That's how he feels. That's the best thing to say to someone. Well, yeah, and I also said, your art. absolutely, yeah. and I also said thank you because that makes me think of what else I could have done with it. And like for the next painting I would do, I would think, okay, well, this is what I'm comfortable doing, but what would I not like to see? Like something that I wouldn't want to add in, how can I make it look good? So th- that kind of criticism, even if it's whatever, stupid, <laughs> yeah. right? It still affects your creative process yeah. moving forward. When did you decide to become a professional artist? I decided uh, February of last year. (laughs) Did you just wake up one day and decide? Well, I finished a semester at high school because I had to go back and finish. Um, And then after I finished that semester, I still had a little bit to get through, but I decided to drop out because I didn't like the structure. I didn't like the confinement. I didn't like um, the limits that it had. And when I dropped out of school for that year, and I I would just spend it in my studio for like 12 to 14 hours a day, um, I realized how much art centers me and how important it actually is to me because everybody has their passion but finding it is very difficult so when I put the time aside to allow myself to find it in that year that's when I really knew right and you don't find it to be work no at all. no it's play it's so <laughs> much fun <laughs> it's weird when people pay me for it because to me it's just like it's just having fun it's like playing outside on a nice summer day or something but then I can make a lifestyle out of it and I I question why more people don't do that and follow their passions in life right that that provides a perfect segue for my next question which is um you're selling your art and using it to using that money to sustain yourself as an artist Yes. so how do you decide how much each painting of yours is worth see that's the tricky part that's actually the part that i'm worst at (laughs) as an artist because i think that putting an actual like value like a money-based value on it is extremely difficult way harder than producing the artwork itself because it could it could like cost a thousand dollars to me but if it means a million dollars to somebody else and all they have is like $50 on them or something, then 
I would just want to give it to them. To me, it's more about getting art out there rather than getting money in my wallet. And so... So how do you reconcile the two? Well, I'm still struggling with that. I'm still figuring it out. I usually ask for help from other people who know business more, but usually I'll split it in half. And so I'll find a price that I like and cut it. And so to make it a little more realistic. Has has there ever been a time where you regretted doing that? Yes, yes. There was this one piece that I did that was called Isabella, and she was absolutely gorgeous. She had a stare that went on for miles, and her skin had beautiful texture. It had a wonderful, like, dark red in the background, and I sold it for $60 because I was desperate, and I needed to, like, feed my habits and buy food. And How much was it worth to you? Uh, gosh, 800 900 easy. It was beautiful, and it was also quite large, too, so it was um, just aesthetically overpowering. But you didn't want to keep it for yourself. Do you, you regret selling it so that you couldn't I not regret able to selling keep it? it at that price. I feel like right. I could have asked for a little bit more, so I didn't regret it. But I believe that no matter how much you like a painting, you should, put your, you should push yourself to sell it, because if you keep too much of your paintings, you're going to connect to them too much, and it's going to hold you back. You're going to want to repeat what you did instead of trying something new. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. What, who inspired Isabel? Isabel was done when I watched um, The Book of Negroes. That was on TV. Um, and I was completely inspired. I love um, the way that black women present themselves and their beautiful features and their lovely hair. Like, they're just aesthetically gorgeous when it comes to painting them. And so... I had to try something like that, so I looked up um, pictures, beautiful photography that was done, and I found the perfect reference image, the perfect model, and I took her face and the structure of it, but kind of um, played with it to suit my, my own liking, and it came from there. Are you inspired by photography as well? Photography, and I go back and forth, because as an artist, I find photography to be a little way of cheating. Um, simply because when you don't hold the utensil and make the image up yourself, you don't understand it as much, in my opinion, but I'm not a photographer. Um, but it's perfect for reference images. It's amazing that we have such a wide variety of like options to paint from. Do you know photographers? I know a few, yeah. Have and you I, expressed your opinion to them? Yes, I have. <laughs> How do they take it? They, um... They didn't really like it too much at first, but I explained myself in the fact that, you know, like ever since photography was originally introduced, it has always been almost like a competition in the eyes of the artist because photography is absolutely beautiful. Like I've seen some outstanding photographs before, but I get very jealous at the same time because they did that with a click of a button when as if like if I were to do it, it would take me hours and hours with my hand. It would mean more because it would have my personal touch in it, but it wouldn't meet the realism that they actually portray. And do you feel as though art has more soul in that way? Yes, because when you're sitting down and you're creating this artwork, nothing's holding you back. It's just your hand to the paper. There's no, there's no middleman that can take away that personal touch. That can still be seen in photography, don't get me wrong, but um, it's almost like it subconsciously happens every time whenever an artist does it. You can't help but put your own um, visual signature on there. Your own mark. Exactly. On the work. Exactly. Right, right. Would you ever be a photographer? I would like to experiment and be a photographer to the extent of making my own reference images. So using models and making them go in the positions that I would like to see, using the lighting that I would want and like um, taking pictures of them so I don't need to scroll the internet to try to find something. I could just create it myself for sure. But right. I need to be taught. <laughs> so ben told me that you... Uh uh, you sold your work to a, ma a meth user once. <laughs> a meth user. <laughs> Slash drug dealer. <laughs> he yeah. asked you to paint his portrait. <laughs> yes, he did. It was very Russian dictator. It was um, a side profile, bad lighting. Um, and he wanted a portrait done of himself to put on his wall. Narcissist much. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if it would be above his bed or like in the kitchen or on the toilet or like by the toilet, you know, <laughs> so every time he's in there, you can look at it. Yeah, how did the <laughs> opportunity come about? How do you he was actually my friend's boyfriend when I originally met him. Now they're, they're broken up and I occasionally talk to him. But, you know, being a, a meth user and all that, he's not my favorite person to go to. He's a little <laughs> more intense than others. Um, 
but he uh, was interested in my artwork because on my Snapchat, I will actually do progression pictures. So take, what are pro- progression pictures? Um, I'll take pictures of whatever work I'm doing at different stages at a time. So you can see all the little things that I put into it to make it the final piece. Right. And so he was looking through all of those and sent me a message being like, this is incredible. Could you paint me? And I said, well, so show me a picture. And he did. And I said, no, because it was a bad picture. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't like the concept. Because <laughs> you're right. Like, it was narcissist, or like, it was very narcissistic of him to want that kind of thing done. And I don't want to partake in that. So what do you enjoy painting the most? Um, well, female forms, for sure. But I also really do love eyes. Eyes are my absolute favorite. Eyes, like... They show expression, they show emotion, they show hurt, they show laughter, they show everything that that person is thinking or and everything that that person wants to say and is holding back. And when you look into somebody's eyes, it, people say that it's the window to the soul and they're completely right. Right. Mm-hmm. We're attracted to the same things. Exactly, yeah. The female form. And the eyes, yeah. <laughs> and the, well, for me, it's female eyes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you know what I mean then? Because, like, when a f- like, when a woman looks at you with that gentle glance, it's just like it touches your soul a little bit. It does turn me on, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So to capture it, it's like it's like a superpower almost to be able to do that. It is. <laughs> um, so I know that mushrooms are a recurring motive yes. in your art. Um, do you find psychedelics to be extremely appealing and why yeah psychedelics i find extremely helpful in my artwork because they remind me of how significant color is because sometimes i'll get shy when it comes to colors like for a while i only used red or i'm um, sorry i only used blue and purple and green like cooler colors i was scared of using red and yellow and orange because they're so bright they're so vibrant they have to be done tastefully was that because you're going through a certain phase in your life uh, yeah i would say so just because if those colors connected to me more it was for a reason right. and then i would dabble in some psychedelics and then afterward my mind would be free and i could use whatever i wanted to with confidence so megan what's next for you as an artist well i was trying to think of more ways to expand my artwork and so it could become more relevant to people because sometimes people don't have the room for a big painting on their wall or something so i'm gonna branch out and hopefully make t-shirts soon but the thing that i'm most excited for is i bought a tattoo machine um, two days ago. So I'm practicing right now and hopefully I can get the hang of it and I'm going to be doing tattoos so my artwork can be on bodies. And tra- oh yeah, because they can travel the world and then people will be like, oh, where did you get that tattoo from? It was like, oh, there's this Toronto artist. She was really uh, cool. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, can you give me a discount? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, Megan, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much for having me. This is fantastic. Of course. <laughs> So our musical guest today is Chris Zeiger, a 19-year-old self-taught guitarist living in Kingston, Ontario. Take it away, Chris. Thank you. Uh. That was TK's song, and uh, next up is Why Is That Bad? Uh, 
drive them away in hurt Never stop to check if I'm hurt I'm tired of losing this race But there's no end Maybe we should check if we're sleeping Pinch me and I just feel pain Our memories are just of you weeping It's all the same to me But why do we feel so inclined? Make the ones around us smile Anything you do Just to get away from you If that's bad Why is it bad? Pushing me ever closer A cliff that I can't jump off Our memories were just of me smiling But it's all the same to me but Why do we feel so inclined? To give the ones we love their smiles I'd do anything for you I'd even stay away from you If that's bad Why is it bad? That was Why Is That Bad? Uh, now I'm going to be playing Double with a Heart of Gold. I knew I was heading into a trap but I did not know whether I'd survive They took me closer into their hearts But I broke theirs just to follow mine I feel like an angel with nothing inside Or a devil with a heart of gold inside I did nothing wrong And I refuse to admit I won't admit So I stand here with a guilty smile Knowing all the trouble that I've caused Awaiting conviction and a trial I know the filthy and the killers all survive Until the end which is foretold me nigh I shall not sleep a wink or shut my eyes until I die Cause I know I'm not right My mind, oh my mind, oh my, oh my, my, mind.
for having me. All right, that's it for us today. Check the links below for more information on The Plague and Chris Zeiger. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter. We'll see you on our next dive into the global artistic microcosm that is Canadian creativity.